बसमीम् अलकुम डे स्टूडेंट्स आई होप यू विल बी फाइन एंड यू विल बी पेइंग योर फुल अटेंशन टू अवर योर स्टडीज एज वी ऑल टीचर्स आर ट्राइंग अवर बेस्ट टू फैसिलिटेट और यू एम एक्स इन वे सो इन आवर टूडेज लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट ग्लोबलाइजेशन एंड स्प्रेड ऑफ इंग्लिश it means globalization in spread of english when we talk about globalization the definitely it means we will talk about english language they are interlinked they are interconnected so let's move on our today's lecture what is globalization first of all there is a need to define what this word means you know, globalization it is a word that constructs itself naturally in the english language by combining the word global with standard suffix ization means it's a combination of two words global and ization that is uh, suffixes that we put after the this uh, root word global so it obviously means or must mean to become global to make global or universal or the things that are shared by the whole world and the next the definition of global is related to the whole world entirely or comprehensively it means when we are talking about this globalization it definitely means that the things will be related to the whole world to the entire world although this definition can say that uh, maybe on the basis of exaggeration it doesn't mean that everywhere in the world uh, the things that can be shared by this the concept of globalization we will talk about this in exceptional cases also about this definition in english language so move on to our next our next slides according to the oxford dictionary the word globalization was first employed in 1930 and it entered the mayum webster dictionary in 1951 and it was widely used by economists and social scientists by the 1960s marshall mcluhan a canadian who analyzed the impact of mass media on society coined the term global village in 1962 the word most usually applies to economy when different nation, nation or national economies become integrated become one part through flows of goods and services capital and labor in other words a global market means we are talking about global market the market that is uh, shared by the whole world that is uh, in which in the connection of different nations will be possible by this globalization the word globalization can apply to global culture or global society or global community global ideas global beliefs and so on so global society how can we see this word global society it means we can say different nations are interrelated or interconnected when something happens Uh, in one part of the world it's also felt or the effects of that particular particular incident can also be seen other parts of the world for example we can see that uh, that um, the fluctuation in the prices of the dollar or fluctuations in the petrol prices it also affects the whole world although the currency the dollar currency is being used by the uh, american or british or some parts of the world but with the uh, high and low rate of this currency it also affects the other nations or other communities or other uh, world of the nation sorry other nations of the world so next we can see how oh, yes we can take the examples of uh, like in these days we are suffering this uh, epidemic disease coronavirus and uh, we can see the effect of this uh, globalization in this sense in this term we can understand that every country is trying to find out the solution uh, of this uh, problem or this and they are trying to make a cure they are trying to make a vaccination to 
cure this epidemic disease but still we are not uh, successful in this regard anyhow uh, the people or scientists or specialists especially in advanced countries they are continuously struggling or if a country is successful and in got success in this regard to find out a vaccination it will be shared it will be shared uh, by the, those particular scientists or by those uh, experts so for the benefit of the human kind so we can say we can understand this globalization is a blessing you know in a sense or it's a, a beneficial and advantageous for the welfare of the human kind next what we can discuss here global ideas or global beliefs now this term we can understand in this way different organizations or institutions need to engage and empower their individuals more effectively and efficiently in digital technology and it's, it has become the global belief in global idea that they must not be lagging behind in their digital or digitizations so they are trying or different researches must be done by different um, uh, scientists or different uh, experts and pros and cons must be discussed step different steps must be launched to train their students teachers to make them efficient users of uh, this digital technology so use of uh, for example use of computer or computer skills now they it has changed the definition of the literacy rate even in the past or past century we can say the literate person who could read write and understand uh, uh, the language but now uh, here this uh, definition has been changed and now the literacy rate literacy definition includes the computer skills also so although we can understand this is a sense this is a globalization is a blessing or beneficial next definitions of globalization we can say the act of globalizing it's called globalization from the noun global meaning pertaining to or involving the whole world worldwide universal export english dictionary the process by which the experience of everyday life marked by the diffusion of commodities and ideas is becoming standardized around the world encyclopedia britannica so what are the diffusion of commodities and but we can understand by this word commodities examples of commodities the things for daily life use for example uh, we can say basic resources or we can include raw material also agriculture mining products such as iron sugar grain rice wheat cotton etc apart from this uh, mass produced unspecialized products also we can include or chemicals or computer memories or computer hardware and software accessories etc we can include these commodities and ideas we have discussed already so when we are discussing about globalization the things that are interrelated the things that are shared by the whole world or the things that are in nations and particular communities are interconnected it doesn't mean that everywhere in the world or every community or in every town we can see about this uh, globalization of english language so there are some exceptional cases where uh, the new researches are not shared by the, those community members or ex especially the we are talking about in the sense or in the terms of english language for example at the present time only north korea is entirely off the grid of the internet its citizens unable to access the world wide web are recognition by this totalitarian 
regimes, leaders that Western culture artifacts and ideologies that present a different ideologies than the one practiced in North Korea would infect its people. Maybe according to their experts in North Korea, they think that they consider that these other these uh, digitization and the use of the internet and use of the English language or different things like uh, these sorts of things may be harmful for the young generation or maybe they can uh, this could be could be cause of the uh, developing con conflicts uh, uh, among their cultures and the western culture so they there is a ban they are totally there is a restriction of by of, to use of these sorts of things so uh, yes we can see uh, some other examples in being a Pakistani and living in this country, developing countries, we can also think about a lot of examples here. We can see in our far-sighted areas or in our far-sighted villages, people are unaware of this uh, computer technology, use of internet or worldwide web. These are the unfamiliar things, the majority of our villagers. So think about some more areas of the world where English is not part of the people's lives. It's up to you. You will think about this thing and think about your own country, Pakistan, where English or the internet or worldwide web things or digitization are not part of the, their lives. Over the past few years, it's globalization accelerated by new technology that has had the greatest impact on the English language. English is the world language. Now, the dominant language of science, computing, and academia in general. Some experts have estimated that 80% of the world's computer code is written in English, and English is the commonly accepted language of international business as well. Rahman uh, is a Pakistani expert or educationist. He tells about the status of the English language in Pakistan. English was introduced in Pakistan when this state was under the British rule in the 19th century. At that time, English was considered the language of the domains of power, such as government, bureaucracy, judiciary, military, education, commerce, media, etc. And it also became the reserve of this elite and the means of empowerment of the ruling class. It means uh, it has become the status. It has become the status symbol, or to get power and to get to earn money and to earn a uh, white collar job. It has become the guarantee. The English language speaker or the people who are expert in this language, they will be. Uh, they will be able to get more chances to get higher highly paid jobs as compared to other people who don't know English language and who are not very expert user of that, this language. Again, Rehman 2005, he says English is still the key for good future, a future with human dignity if not public deference, a future with material comfort if not prosperity, a future with that modicum of security, human rights, recognition, which all human beings desire. So irrespective of what the state provides, parents are willing to part with scarce cash to buy their children such a future. These parents, they also want that their children must be, yeah, must be taught in the English speaking schools or, or where the English is the main focus of that sort of institution they must be taught their children must be taught over there and they are paying they are pay, paying highly fee and they are paying or they are taking too much effort in this regard to make the their children uh, an efficient user of the English language or competent user of that particular English language so that after completion of their studies 
they are eligible to get a lucrative jobs to earn money and to earn fame or status etc globalization and english the language of global communication is english the increased interconnection of individuals necessitates sorry necessitates a shared symbolic code this code is english it means when we are talking about this concept globalization or this term globalization definitely we will discuss the language the only language that will be discussed with association of this term or this concept will be english language not any other language not any language of uh, uh, underdeveloped countries or not any language of uh, any developed countries just english 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 and that will be english only with the association of this term we will not talk about, talk about uh, any indigenous or any local languages of any country or particular community we will not talk about urdu language we will not talk about arabic we will not talk about any language that is related to third world countries even we cannot think about those languages related to third world countries so the only coins that is acceptable in this current world in this current uh, uh, scenario that will be english so globalization and english both are inseparable parts of each other we cannot separate this globalization and english language it is common to hear and read that english is uh, a global language or a world language they still define it in a purely physical sense what these expressions mean is that english has some presence in nearly every country in the world from this point of view english is unique english is uh, omnipresent means everywhere we can see although this term is based on the exaggeration that we have discussed in our previous slide there are some exceptional cases some areas some lands and some mm, provinces or some places where english is not in the scene in the perspectives we cannot see see english language over there however the overall impression is there english is everywhere in that no other language is currently so widespread other international languages just such as arabic spanish tend to be spoken in specific geographical areas arabic will be a spoken in arab countries or in arab lands or while the use of french is also decline or in many former french colonies even like the areas that are now called that used to be called into china that sorts of countries the french was being used in previous centuries but now it is in decline english therefore is the only international language without precise geographical boundaries we cannot say that english will be used in this particular geographical boundaries like english will be used in the boundaries of pakistan or india it's cross the border and it's beyond the geographical boundaries means the geographical boundaries have uh, no values or the worthless because in this <coughs> i'm sorry english language has crossed the boundaries of the countries so it means it has been reached everywhere in the world despite its enormous proportions the spread of english in the world has not taken place in the same way and with the same effects everywhere in the presence of english is very uneven the adjective global in the sense maybe in exaggerations as we have seen the examples of north korea and there are some other parts of the world where english is not in the scene of those there are some other example in the united states english is not an official language at the federal level while it has official status in many form of british colonies in africa and asia Uh, for example title 6 of the civil rights act of 1964 is in place to protect the rights of individuals taxpayers who do not speak fluent english so in order to receive federal funds states must make sure that vital documents are made available in every language spoken by people receiving benefits subsi subsidies by the or subsidized by the federal government 
there are some other examples where English is not in the scenes rural China or rural England or urban Malaysia English is not in the perspective of those areas these are the exceptional or exceptional lands English is largely considered the language of globalization and international development as such the English language has been widely disseminated across the globe the adoption of English by diverse people has evolved multiple varieties I'm sorry the adoption of English by diverse peoples have evolved multiple varieties called world English so it means now we will discuss about word English we have heard about the word English in a singular sense in the singular form but here we are discussing about or we will discuss in our later slides the word English is it means there are many many Englishes or there are many many varieties of English there is not a single variety we will not a single we will not discuss a single variety that's related to a single community or as in the past centuries or in olden days the, there was a concept that the British variety or American variety or like or these sorts of varieties the main standardized varieties are acceptable by the world or by the non-native people but now the this paradigm has been changed now we can see the English varieties or we can see the Indian varieties we can see the Pakistani varieties or there are many many or, or we can see some other examples or in some other lands or areas where English is in the use or these varieties to some extent by the experts or these varieties are also acceptable although because of these varieties due to these varieties there are some uh, complications anyhow these varieties these local varieties by different communities fulfill the need of local needs uh, means it fulfills the uh, but we can say it fulfills the basic uh, communication uh, basic communication process however these local varieties could be cause of uh, complications or could be cause of communication breakdown when we are in foreign foreign countries maybe these local varieties may be um, become hurdles or hindrance while in uh, smooth communication process anyhow we can see there are some varieties of English language there are not only there are we cannot say that there are, there are only two varieties English varieties or American or as we can say general America GA general American variety or uh, receipt pronunciation British accent or British variety there are some other varieties also we can understand we will discuss it later word English is first of all there is a need to define this word English is in the literature the label word English is is mostly used to refer to the institutionalized second language varieties of English spoken around the world institutionalized means that is acceptable or that is being used everywhere Word English is new English is we can also use this thought these sorts of uh, concepts or terms the global spread of English is later half of the 20th century this concept of word English is was emerged and it was accepted <coughs> of a single language English is the first language of 300 million people <coughs> English as second language additional language is used by 700 million people lingua franca the language that is used everywhere of the world the language that is uh, understood everywhere in the world throughout the world so need for lingua franca why there is a need for lingua franca why we there we need to use our one language that must be acceptable that must be understood by different communities although that uh, lingua franca or that language uh, 
uh, is not their native language or this not their tal one or this no. they uh, the lingua franca being a second language or foreign language will be used by those community will, it will be acceptable so middle ages latin was the only means of education in that of transmitting culture in the western countries it means at that time in middle ages latin was a lingua franca that was understood and, and considered the major uh, tool for communication major uh, in most of the situation we can say next is 17th and the beginning of the 20th century the language that was used as a lingua franca it was a french and it was used as an international language of diplomacy all over the world lingua franca in artificial lingua franca there was a struggle uh, that was done by an eye specialist polish eye specialist lazarus zamenhof he has tried you know, he has established an artificial lingua franca so how he has done his efforts in this regard is the name of that lingua franca the name of that language that artificial lingua, lingua franca it was esperanto esperanto was taught at 600 schools and 61 universities in the 1970s this language this artificial lingua franca means according to their specialist zamenhof this they have intention or the experts that who were um, his companions in this effort they have the view that this esperanto language must be the lingua franca rather than english language so how far they succeeded in this in this effort up to the present day several newspapers have been published in this language of esperanto conferences have been held a number of books bible the quran and the nobel prize winning book faithfulness by the hungarian author emre kretsch have been translated into esperanto so it means many many efforts have been done by these expert on this language esperanto this artificial lingua franca esperanto competed to become the lingua franca in the world but it failed anyhow maybe majority of uh, the students among you maybe they haven't heard this name uh, this uh, artificial lingua franca uh, this name of the language is pranto maybe because it uh, didn't get success and they are experts they failed to make this esperanto language as a lingua franca so what were the reasons why this language failed to become a lingua franca number one there there was a east european origin the countries of the the list of the countries of east european languages given in uh, blue highlighted uh, we can see or because east european countries they are not capable to command or to lead the world or the languages of the east european uh, origin or countries they are not well advanced because there are no researches there are no efforts have been done or we cannot say that this is the we cannot say that this is the willingness of one person in who will try or who will make the language lingua franca no it's a matter of centuries it's a matter of uh, it's not a one day task it takes time to make the language lingua franca so although they have done for many years they have done to make this language esperanto as a lingua franca but they were not able to get success next not native languages of a community like english is a lingua franca and it's a native language so many many people majority of the world we can say or but this language lingua franca it was uh, it was developed it was not a native language of any community number 3 does not have its own traditions literature and culture the if a language become lingua franca it means it must have their own traditions and norms and literature and culture that affect the people that will by those things people will be fascinated will be inspired to know about their culture to know about that language although 
know about that lingua franca. So this language is Parento was lacking these things. Next, an artificial language lacking like political, military, and economic power. International communication is possible through a common language, a natural language. So it also we can say this Esperanto had not any political, military, and economic power. So it was failed. And they, that uh, Polish scientist or Polish, uh, sorry, Polish doctor was not able to make this language as a lingua franca. Next, English as a lingua franca, 21st century, it is beyond question that English language has become the lingua franca. And it is uh, English language that is seen everywhere in the, in every, uh, in every nook and in every cranny. In everywhere we can see English language as a lingua franca that is being used, that is being uh, understood by the different community members, even the people of uh, we can say even the people of uh, same area or maybe there are some uh, different uh, languages used by different uh, people of different provinces and they are unable to understand that they are provincial language sometimes they are using that language here i want to give my own examples during my stay in malaysia i met a girl a pakistani girl who was doing phd over there and she belonged to a uh, province of Balochistan. She belonged to Koita and her language was Pashto and I couldn't understand her language although she was a Pakistani and my own nationality member but I couldn't understand her Pashto language and she was unable to understand my Urdu language or any other uh, language related to my own area. So in what language we were doing communication at that time we used English because we know English the common language that we both speak of uh, Pakistani nationality we know just English language that was a common so we can say even the people of the same area and there there are some different languages or differences in uh, provincial languages or there are some regional languages english will be used to communicate or to communicate or to, to fulfill the needs of communication why chinese language could not become the lingua franca mandarin chinese is spoken by the greatest number of native speakers and uh, if it is the matter of population or large population it must be the Chinese language that must be the lingua franca so it's not a matter of great numbers other great lingua francas for example Greek and Latin we can realize that they seemed imperishable but faded away with the declining power of their speakers so if the speakers of that particular language are in power or in political or economic power or in they have some high status or they have become superpower the language will also be in the high status and that language will be liked by other communities or that language will be used because people want to get progress people want to get um, prosperity and that will be uh, possible by uh, by using that language so it's not a matter of uh, number great numbers of the native speakers it's mainly we can understand it's a matter of economic power and financial power and the status throughout the world that make a language a lingua franca as we can see english language and the native speaker of that language are in power and they can lead they can lead the world or they can command so the things that is related to English language we are using this that's why we are using this language as a lingua franca the decline of British power meant the decline of English language but the power moved to another side of the ocean English received the renowned lease of life their English received the further injection of life from a worldwide which it has already penetrated Diffusion of English, we can see the spread of English has resulted in emergence of three broad categories of regional varieties of English language. It means when we are talking about English language, it doesn't mean that there are only two varieties 
or this is just we are talking about GA or general American or American variety or received pronunciation or RP or British variety there are some other varieties also Braj V. Kesho has, has done a lot of work uh, regarding this, these varieties, word Englishes or the inner circle or outer circle or expanding circles as we will discuss or he has made some discrimination or he has divided different people of different areas into three different categories. There are three circles that are uh, discussed by Braj V. Kesho. The number one is there the inner circle, number two is their outer circle, and number three is their expanding circle. Inner circle mean native people, the native speaker of English language, and the native nouns and standards and standards English they are using uh, that is used by the native speakers of inner circle. The outer circle, the people of uh, different areas, or the ex colonies, ex colonies of the British people where they go and they spread this language and that language they have so much influence on the lives of those, those people that finally they accepted their language accepted the language of British accepted the language of English and they started to use that language and to become successful or successful member of the society or to get uh, success and other other fields of life or like research or like um, technology or any other there are a lot of fields where they want to get success so they apply that language in their lives and next they are the th circle number three expanding circle expanding circles we can understand the third circle where the English in the start of the English was prohibited there are lands or areas or countries they didn't like English to speak English most of the time they prefer their in their prefer their own language or national national language or regional language what in what way the majority of the people talk that particular language so but with the passage of time finally they realized especially the new generation they realized that we cannot do progress uh, except uh, to adopt this language so the examples of their countries we will see later we have like China Japan Korea and such sort of countries so spread of English we can say the inner circle comprises the mother country England and the British Isles in the areas where the speakers from Britain took the language with them as they migrated to Australia, New Zealand, and North America. Here you can see this model like uh, concentric or eccentric circle of England. We can see the expanding circle, outer circle, and the inner circle, the names of the list. All the we cannot say that this is the particular divisions of the lands or areas regarding usage of English language. Anyhow, this indicates something, some difference we can understand by this model that Raj Vikashu. Next there is the outer circle comprises the countries where the language was <laughs> transplanted by a few colonial administrators, businessmen, or educators and missionaries and is now nurtured by the vast majority of the indigenous multilingual users. They use English as an additional language for their own purposes, which includes many national and international domains. Or next there is expanding circle. Represent the countries like China, Japan, Korea, Thailand, countries of Europe, Middle East, and the Latin America, where the language is still spreading, mainly of serving the need for international medium in business and commerce, diplomacy, finance, and other such spheres, internal domains of academia, media, and professions such as medicine and engineering. As I have discussed earlier, the, uh, in the start or in the previous uh, X generation, you didn't realize the importance of English language, and there was totally banned, or prohibited. English language was prohibited by the natives speaker of these areas but with the passage of time finally they realize the importance of English language especially new generation they are very active to learn this language 
So this is end of our today's lecture. Goodbye. Allah Hafiz.